How does your body turn food into the poop? Mechanical digestion begins in the mouth as the food is chewed. Chemical digestion begins in the mouth when the food mixes with saliva. Saliva contains an enzyme, amylase, that begins the breakdown of carbohydrates. The epiglottis is a flexible flap at the end of the larynx in the throat. It acts as a switch between the larynx and the esophagus. The esophagus is a muscular tube connecting the throat with the stomach. The esophagus is about 8 inches long. The esophagus muscle acts with peristaltic action to move swallowed food down to the stomach. The action of peristalsis looks like an ocean wave moving through the muscle. The food then enters the stomach, which is a rounded, hollow, J-shaped organ located between the esophagus and the duodenum. The stomach has three mechanical tasks to do. First, the stomach must store the swallowed food in liquid. This requires the muscle of the upper part of the stomach to relax and accept large volumes of swallowed material. The inner layer of the stomach is full of wrinkles, known as rugae. Rugae both allow the stomach to stretch in order to accommodate large meals and help to grip and move food during digestion. The second job is to mix up the food, liquid, with digestive juice produced by the stomach. Finally, the stomach empties this acidy mash slowly into the small intestine. The small intestine, or small bowel, is an organ in the gastrointestinal tract where most of the end absorption of nutrients and materials from food takes place. It lies between the stomach and large intestine and receives bile and pancreatic juice through the pancreatic duct to aid in digestion. Duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, which receives partially digested food from the stomach and begins the absorption of nutrients. The pancreatic juices and bile that are released into the duodenum help the body to digest fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. The food is in intestine now and have very long way to go. Digestion is important because your body needs nutrients from food and drink to work properly and stay healthy. Proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and water are nutrients. Your digestive system breaks nutrients into parts small enough for your body to absorb and use for energy, growth, and cell repair. Proteins break into amino acids. Fats break into fatty acids and glycerol. Carbohydrates break into simple sugars. In the small bowel, the food particles get even smaller. Here is where all the important vitamins and nutrients in food move through the blood vessels that are in the lining of the small bowel. The food takes the nutrients to other organs in the body. The nutrients are used to help repair cells and tissue. What is left over, which is mostly liquid, then moves into the colon. The water is absorbed in the colon, bacteria in the colon break down the remaining material, then the colon moves the leftover material into the rectum. The rectum is like a storage holder for the waste. Muscles in the rectum move the waste, called stool, out of the body through the anus. The vaginal walls do indeed have folds, and these folds contribute to the unique anatomy and function of the vagina. The folds of tissue help to trap moisture and create a lubricating surface, which can facilitate sexual intercourse and help to protect the vaginal lining from irritation. Additionally, the rugae provide elasticity and the ability to stretch during activities such as sexual intercourse and childbirth. The stretching and pressure exerted on the vaginal walls during delivery can cause temporary disappearance of vaginal rugae. However, after childbirth, the vaginal tissues can undergo a healing process and start to reappear at third postpartum week.
With age, the production of estrogen decreases, which can lead to a thinning of the vaginal walls and a loss of vaginal rugae. This can make the vagina feel less elastic and more sensitive to pain. The seminal forms a thick fluid that is alkaline in order to protect sperm from the acidic environment of the female vagina. The gel is liquefied by enzymes from the prostate gland. It also contains sugars to nourish the sperm. The sperm's nucleus, which carries the father's DNA, fuses with the egg's nucleus, which contains the mother's DNA. The genetic material from both mother and father combines to create a complete set of 46 chromosomes, half of which are inherited from each parent. Zygote is the first cell of the developing embryo. It carries all the genetic instructions necessary to form a new individual. The zygote begins a rapid process of cell division. It divides into two cells, then four, then eight, forming a small, growing ball of cells. As the cells are dividing, gentle muscle contractions in the tube's walls and tiny hair-like structures called cilia propel the zygote along the fallopian tube toward the uterus. This journey typically takes about three to five days. The heart pumps blood throughout your body to give the energy and oxygen to every cell. It's circulation of blood that is vital to sustaining life. As the blood moves, it pushes against the sides of the artery walls. The strength of this pushing is your blood pressure. <laughs> 